hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Welcome back to the Nisha Uncensored live stream, where you never know what I'm going to say, what we're going to talk about, what we're going to get into. If you're new, say hi. Say hi in the comments. Welcome back to my book-loving, bacon-loving, well-rounded, rational-thinking individuals. Uh, happy to see you. I'm going to try to do these more often, probably on Tuesdays. I'm going to try to work that into my weekly schedule. We'll see how it goes. You can try to hold me to it. <laughs> I'm a little disheveled today. Actually, my hair looks fairly good for what I just got doing. Gun got done doing. So today was move the sheep day. And we have, how many sheep do we have now? 67 sheep. And many of those are babies and what we call teenagers. So they're not babies, but they're not fully grown either. So they're like six months old, right? There is a fresh one. If you want to see a brand new baby lamb, you can go head over to my Instagram and see a picture. I named her Milky White because me and Beckett just got done reading Jack and the Beanstalk a few nights ago and that name was just stuck in my head. The cow. The cow's name is Milky White. Anyways, Ken was out there moving the sheep. Now, in the winter, we give them hay to supplement them because it's it's winter. And so they haven't been moved in quite a while. So these little teenagers have never been outside of the big paddock that we have. And they decided that they did not want to leave, that they were very happy in that paddock. And so we spent about 30 minutes chasing them around. And I definitely have sheep poop on my feet, on my shoes. And yeah, that's. So what we've been doing, and the sheep are currently in my front yard, so if you're a local, if you drive by and see a bunch of sheep in the front yard, that's okay. They're supposed to be there for right now. So that's what we've been doing. How have you been doing? It's nearly spring, and it is still cold here. We had beautiful weather for a few days, and now we have, you know, another winter, and then it'll be pretty, and then it'll be winter again, and then it'll probably rain and be cold on Easter, and then it'll be pretty, and then it'll be cold, and then it'll be spring for two weeks and then it'll be summer <laughs> and that's how Tennessee weather rolls oh good to see you guys hey 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 LP from Ireland hey happy belated St. Patty's Day uh Amber can we see a video of all your animals someday how cute yeah we should do an updated animal tour so we have chickens on the farm we have a few different breeds of chickens we have sheep, we have dogs and cats. Is that all? Currently, I think that, that is, that's all. Uh, we will be bringing in some horses at some point and of course a pony or two, right? So that's exciting. Who went to Vegas without me? Anybody in the comments that went to Vegas? How was it? Did you have fun? <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, like I said, pollen. I said this a few episodes ago. The pollen is out showing its face. Um, my parents actually have sinus infections. I don't. I'm just a little stuffy. But Back in the day, I used to always have to go get a shot in the butt and a round of antibiotics and a Z-Pack because I always had such a horrible sinus infection every single year. But that hasn't happened since I stopped eating junk. Isn't that amazing? Oh, Erin, thanks so much. Yeah, so I filmed a Get Ready With Me where I did my makeup, but we talked about all kinds of stuff, and it was fun. I had fun recording it, and you guys watched it. It actually performed really well, which I didn't think it would, which, like you guys know, if you've been around for the last month or two, I'm mostly making content that I like to make, and, you know, if it gets views, cool. If it doesn't, cool. But that one did, so that was a pleasant little surprise. Yeah, one of the books that I talked about in the Get Ready With Me was The Midnight Library. And so many of you said that you've ordered it. And that is great. I think you're going to love it. Yeah, the women. Uh, D. King says, Thank the women was amazing. Thank you for recommending it. It is a book that definitely stays with you. Yeah. It is. It's a heavy book, but in the best sort of way. Thanks, Allison. 
Oh, Betsy, thank you. <laughs> GS says, I was so disappointed for you not getting to go on your trip, but just wanted to say kudos to you for the way you've handled your get ready with me. Thank you. What are you going to do? You know, can't, if you just wallow in it, nothing, that's not going to help anything. Move on, have as much fun as you can doing what you can. I will say the kids were in rare form <laughs> while Ken was out of town, especially Beckett. But, you know, we, we, we did what we could. I wish we would have had better weather. Ooh, that's a good question, Stubbin. Stubbin? Stubbin. Who is your favorite character in Lord of the Rings? Sam. <laughs> Sam. Samwise Gamzee. He deserves all the attention, and Frodo got him on my nerves, to be honest. Which I get it, I get it, I get it, but still. Yes, Tony, I did finish reading The Teacher. That's a Frida McFadden mystery thriller. For those of you who don't know, it's her newest book, and it was amazing. I gave it, I think, 4.25 stars, probably. It was really entertaining, super easy to read, not a long book. I finished it in less than a day, and it was really good. And that was with the kids at home, so <coughs> that's impressive. Allison, that's a good question. Do you speak Spanish? Your dad is Puerto Rican, right? Yes, my dad is Puerto Rican. He was born in Puerto Rico, moved to Miami when he was like five. And then in his 20s, the whole family moved to t Tennessee, this town that I'm living in, for a really odd reason. That's a long story time. I might tell that story one day. I might get him to tell it, actually. What if Pedro had a story time with me? I think you guys would like that. And while he was here, he met my mom. They both were working at the local hospital. She was a secretary, and he was a... Uh, he was an orderly, and they met and got married, and I'm the product of that now. However, <laughs> I only speak the bare minimum Spanish. I mean, I can just barely skate by. If you just start talking to me, no. I don't know. But I, I mean, I can work my way through a situation if I had to, but that's it. And I'm probably not as good as I used to be. It's something we would like to work on. This family would love to be fluent in Spanish. And that's on the list of things that we are working on. We are working on piano. We are working on all the things, all the skill sets, right? Bev says, did the woman ever get sentenced for the fire on your house? So that trial is in June. So we haven't had the trial yet. So that's upcoming. I will fill you in, I promise. <laughs> this has been a, a four-year long process. The justice system. I've learned a lot about the justice system and it is very interesting. Um, you know, maybe write a book about it. Who knows? But I, it, no, we don't have a sentencing yet. The trial is in June. I'll keep you updated. I promise. Mary D says, when introducing, uh, reintroducing foods after doing a lion diet for autoimmune, what are the least inflammatory foods to most inflammatory? Is there a list? There is a list inside of the group. If you're in the PhD community, which you can join for $5, you can come hang out with me and Ken and uh, the rest of the PhD coaches, and we answer questions just like I'm doing right now. Less fun for me. I mean, like, we don't talk about just random stuff. Well, well, I mean, sometimes in my group we do, but it's more health-focused, right? Uh, so least inflammatory would be any other type of meats besides ruminant, because on the lion diet, you are eating ruminant-only meat, right? So you would start maybe with seafood, then move to chicken, then move to pork, then move to, if you wanted to include dairy, uh, dairy back into your diet, and then, you know, vegetables, seasonings. But I really break it down in a list format in the group for you guys who are in there. I'm working on making that into a program so you can just download it and get it. I'm not done with it yet, so. <clears throat> How many members are in the private community right now? It's something around 7,900 ish and that's not like some people are not that active some people are in there all the time some people are in there only for the live streams and some people bounce back and forth and but that's how many people are in there 
you know, statistically, but that's not how many people are active, probably. <laughs> Maureen, I get this question all the time. What did you use to get rid of the dark spots on your face? Your skin looks amazing. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know for Maureen how long you've been following me, but most of the people who ask me this question have been following me since I was pregnant with Beckett. And while I was pregnant with Beckett, I was in the sun a lot. And I think I probably had a bit of hyperpigmentation because of my hormones. So if you go back and look at like pictures of me when I was pregnant with Beckett. I, my freckles are loud and proud. Then with Bonnie, they didn't really get that dark. I didn't really have hyperpigmentation. And now my freckles are just normal. They're subtle. They're there. You just can't see them. Uh, but I didn't use anything to get them to like chill out. It just kind of happened. So, um, some people use a vitamin C serum to even out pigmentation. There are some really good brands out there. I think the one that I have used in the past, but didn't really, like I didn't use it religiously. It's still, it's three years old and sitting in my drawer is from, oh, what is that brand? I can see the bottle in my head. I can't remember. But really any vitamin C serum, that's what those are for, for um, evening out skin skin tone. So you can look into getting a good quality one of those, see if it helps. Um, but mine, mine was mostly because of pregnancy, I think. And, and in the summer, they will get more prominent. So you can see them more. Um, but in the winter, they kind of like chill out a little bit more. No, it's not CeraVe, although that they they probably have one. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, Panda Massaged. Yeah, Amber, I think that the, from pregnancy, it was... Because I had my... I was on injectable hormones because Beckett was a... I had to have fertility treatments to get pregnant with him. And then for the first three months, I had to inject hormones, which is <laughs> horrible. Um, so I, it could have been all kinds of things, but it just went away on its own. Let's see here. You find a really good question. Hmm, cookie. Can you recommend a good underarm deodorant for my 17 year old female? We love to listen to you. Oh, hi cookie and hi to your daughter. Uh, yes, so native. Specifically the, I think it's coconut scent. It doesn't have any bad ingredients. There's no aluminum in it. I've worn it for years when I was working labor and delivery, 12 hour shifts and running and gunning. I could go all day with just that and make, I would sweat a little bit, but it never made me stink. Like I never stunk. And we would like, we were a close knit group of nurses. If I, and we would be like, Hey, am I okay? Do I smell? Do I stink? <laughs> So they would have told me if I was smelling. So native out of all the different kinds that I have tried is by far and away the best one that I have used. That's um, they've got so many different smells, you know, whatever she likes, I'm sure is fine. But that's my favorite one is the coconut. They also have soaps and shampoos and conditioners. Allison, any books on your TBR list that you're really excited about? So for those of you who aren't in the book world, TBR means to be read. So if you can look behind me here, this is my TBR shelf, except for Crescent City. <laughs> These right here. So one of the ones on there, there's two actually that I'm really excited about. Powerless, which is a fantasy, and The Wishing Game. And those are two that I'm pretty excited to start, but I I've still been recovering from the sickness, you know, 
the stomach plague that hit us. And right now I'm just listening to Akatar again. Like I've already I finished it in December and I'm reading it again. Highly recommend rereading all of the Sarah J. Mass books because the second round you're really paying attention to like little details that tie into the other series. And, and like I sat up in the bed one night, I was like, <gasps> like there was a detail, and I was like, does that? Is that the same? Is that the one? Summer, can you do keto or carnivore while breastfeeding? Yes, absolutely, you can. I've done both. So with Beckett, I was more keto. And with Bonnie, no, 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 take that back. With Beckett during my pregnancy, I was more keto, but breastfeeding, I was carnivore for the first four ish months. And then I transitioned back into like meat based, right? I had onions and pickles and you know, just some specific types of vegetables that I allowed back into my way of eating. And uh, I did great. Now, if you ate standard American diet while you were pregnant, then you don't want to just go straight into carnivore, right? Just stop eating the junk and go back to eating real whole foods. And you can still allow carbs from vegetables and like fruit if you want to. And then lower the carbs slowly, you know, over several months, just because of the fluid shift that happens that could interfere with uh, milk supply. But it's not dangerous, but you want to just ease back into it. So keep that in mind. Whatever way you're eating now, if you want to go back to carnivore, just do it slowly. And if you're already carnivore, then you're going to be fine. Make sure you get plenty of electrolytes and fluids and skin-to-skin -skin time with the baby. And if you really want to be successful, I definitely recommend hiring a lactation consultant because the most common problem moms have is latch. And you really need an in-person um, breastfeeding consultant to make sure that your latch is good and baby is on there the right way and just to keep things as painless as possible. It's going to be a little uncomfortable in the beginning, but that's, you know, that's kind of part of it. <clears throat> oh, Deborah, welcome. Mimi. Of all the books you have read, do you have any recommendations for someone who used to be an avid reader, but since she, I, have developed Parkinson's and short-term memory loss, I need something? Um, yeah, I would go, if you don't have an Audible subscription, I would use Audible. Because you're able to kind of like do your daily activities while still consuming literature. Uh, and then... It really depends on your taste. Like, what do you love? I'm thinking about doing a video that's like, I recommend books based on TV shows that you love. And then I just go through the list of my top 10 to 15 books and tell you, if you like this show, you will like this book. And if you like this show or this movie, then you will like this book. And kind of give you a place to start. Because I know so many people are like, I want to start reading, but I just don't know what I want to read. I don't know what I would like. I think that would be helpful. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yes? Is that a good idea? <laughs> Barbecue. Is it true that Dr. Barry is a flirt? Does that intimidate you? Uh, he's friendly. And now I'm... I think that's a me thing. I'm just very secure. I don't really get jealous and people like to talk and people say really weird things, but I know he's just friendly. He can't help it. <laughs> but no, it doesn't intimidate me. If it did, I think that I probably wouldn't have married him. <laughs> Oh, Ellen just gave herself Audible as an early Mother's Day gift. <gasps> Mother's Day's coming up. I just realized that. Just a second. I just got really hot. I think the heat kicked on. It's such a weird time for the thermostat because it struggles. 
like one day it's 80, 80 degrees outside and it's air conditioning. And then the next it's 46 degrees. And then last night it was 26 degrees at night. And now it's like 60. It's fun times. So we go from freezing to sweating, from freezing to sweating. Oh, oh, you're so sweet, Ellen. <laughs> Sandy. Hey, Sandy. I remember Dr. Berry had a skin clinic in the old office. I noticed you used some sort of injections and not to be mean. I just would like to know what is the best place to start to help my wrinkles. That's not me. I love to talk about injections. I think it's a fascinating topic. So if you're someone who is okay with getting injections, you know, that's a personal thing. Are you good with it? Or are you not? Me, myself? I love Botox. Botox is the best. I went about four years without any. Prior to that, I got it probably every four months, and now I'm back to it. So I got Botox, I don't know, three months ago probably. But see how my face still moves? So that's called baby Botox. So instead of getting, like, your face frozen, you just relax the muscles a bit so here's my problem areas and it always matters like what are you most insecure about me it's here I get that from my dad um mine is pretty much I probably need a touch up but even when I first get it done I can still move my face around so you got to go to somebody who knows exactly what they're doing and then so you get it here if you have crow's feet and you want to work on that here if you got the lines on your forehead and here if you have the levens and that's, that's the most. But you have to go to somebody who knows how to do it without making you look like you got a frozen face like Tim Allen in the Christmas with the Cranks maybe, right? You don't want that. Um, and then injections, same thing. <laughs> you can get somebody who knows exactly what they're doing and somebody who doesn't. And unless you want, you know, duck lips, I, I would... Maybe stay away from lip injections. The amount of people who truly know how to do lip injections, few and far, between, far between. I wouldn't get filler anywhere here. And no, just stay away from that junk. It migrates. It's just, it's not. Mm -mm, don't do it. Botox, though, that works every time. To quote Samantha from Sex and the City. <laughs> also, Botox can help people with... Um, Tension headaches, like those other things, uh, people who have sweaty palms, like it's actually really cool, the mechanism of action when it comes to Botox. There's a lot of different ways you can use it. <laughs> right, Serena, you don't want to come out looking like the Simpsons characters with your lips, right? Nobody wants to, I don't know why, I guess some people really think that like, they like the way that that looks. And if you feel good, girl, do you. All right? I'm not judging you. I don't care. It's not my face. I'm just, keep in mind, never go to a budget Botox place, God. <laughs> if it seems cheap, just don't, just don't do it. Okay? <laughs> All right, French Fry says rosacea remedies. Uh, so we have a lot of people in the private community that have skin conditions similar or just they have rosacea. And so much of the time it is dairy related. Not all the time, but most of the time. So if you have not tried giving up dairy for 30, 60, 90 days, that's where I would start. Amber has uh, had Botox for tension headaches and says it works really well. For those of you interested. <laughs> and uh, I've been on the keto board diet for almost four months, but the cyst on my ovary is getting worse. It's pressing on a nerve, causing tingling and numbness in my leg. Advice for how to shrink. I mean, it depends on what the cyst was caused by right um 
some people, if it's that big, will need to have it removed. And if it's causing you that much pain and you've been ketovor for four months and it's not improving, like you may need to have some medical interventions. If you want to give carnivore a try, you can do that. If you want to take out the dairy, you can do that. It may help. It may not. It doesn't make you bulletproof. It just gives you a better fighting chance. So KD says, yes, my rosacea was from dairy. <laughs> I love my dairy, but I'm willing to cut it out, right? How bad do you want this symptom to improve? Are you willing to give up dairy or are you not? And that's up to you, you know? Ah, uh, Cynthia, I have not read Kristen Hanna's book, Mystic Lake. Now, I have several of hers up here. I uh, have True Colors, The Nightingale. I think those are the two that I have that I haven't read yet. Hall? Can PhD help with agoraphobia? So I don't know specifically your situation, but I will say there is Evidence that supports meat-based, high-fat, helps improve all kinds of things like this. Like anxiety, depression, PTSD, those type of things. And if you want to really dive deep into that, I always say brain energy by Dr. Why can I remember his name? Chris Palmer. Chris Palmer. And then Georgia Eat also has a book. That she just came out with, which is called. It's sitting in there. Change your diet, change your, diet, change your mind. And so, I, anybody who struggles with any sort of mental health issues we got people in the group who with agoraphobia. agoraphobia, yes. Okay. Then you guys need to read those two books. Or if you're like, I can't read a book, I don't want to read a book. Look them up on YouTube and listen to them do interviews. There's plenty of them out there. Dr. Barry has interviewed both of both Georgia Eat, have you? Yeah, Georgia Eat and Chris Palmer, both of them on his channel, but they've been on other channels too. Serena said, Say hi to the flirt. <laughs> hi to the flirt. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Allison, what books have you started that were slow, but you. Gave it time and ended up loving it. For me, it was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I liked that book a lot. For me, the one that sticks in my mind is The Covenant of Water. It's long. It's a tome. Like, it is huge. Um, and it has a lot of information. And it covers a long time period. Like, it goes from the 1900s to the 1970s and follows this family in uh, India. Yes. Um. And it was a little slow, but I cried. And I mean, I will never forget that book. It's here in my, in my, in my soul. Amazing. Like, oh my gosh. It, it, it is probably going to be in my top reads for the rest of my life. But it's not an easy read, but it is worth it. Tracy, will you be doing another book video? Also, are you planning on reading Never Lie by Freddie McFadden? So, yeah, I'm going to do all kinds. I think I'm going to do a book wrap-up pretty much every month, like what I read in March, what I read in April. And every now and then, like, maybe an extra reading vlog or something like that. Uh, I have not read Never Lie yet, but it is on my list. And I'm pretty sure all, if you have Kindle Unlimited, I think all of Freddie McFadden's books are included. So, you, if you have a subscription to Kindle Unlimited that's included so you don't have to buy it which is really nice because nearly all of her books are amazing uh, so I've heard really good things about Never Lie I think it's about I heard someone do a summary and it was 
this couple, they move into a house and the woman that used to live there disappeared and she was a psychologist. And then she finds this secret, secret room in the house and starts listening to uh, the tapes that are in the secret room that the psychologist has recorded all of her sessions. And it's like really creepy, which sounds right up my alley. <laughs> so, yes, I will be reading that one. Aaron, sorry, I missed, where did you go? Aaron, uh, what do you suggest for baby led weaning? I have an almost five month old and I don't want to do the Gerber crap, right? Scrambled eggs is one of the first foods Bonnie and Beckett both had. I just scrambled them in butter, put a little salt on there and they ate them up with their little chubby fingers. Um, ground beef, avocado. Uh, they were both exposed to peanut butter early on just to keep them from having any use. Um, allergies. Now we got the cleanest, plainest, most disgusting. Like we would never eat peanut butter. If you love peanut butter and you tasted that, you'd be like, Ugh, because it's MCT oil, uh, no sugar at all. It's just, and you could also grind up your own peanuts and make your own peanut butter to expose them. Now they only got like a spoonful a few times, enough to expose them and, you know, keep them from getting an allergy. Um, and then we also would do rib bones. And we would stick them in the freezer so they could teeth, but also there'd be little, little bits of meat for them to like gnaw on. And then steak cut into strips so they couldn't put, you know, they just gnaw on it and gum it to death, right? And that's pretty much the first few foods that they got. And then we they get to a point where they're just grabbing food off of, <laughs> off of your plate and eating it. And yeah, if we were out at a restaurant, I would sometimes chew up meat like a mama bird and give it to Bonnie. So that it was a little bit emulsified. Um, babies are really good at not choking. I know we're all terrified as moms that our kid's going to choke. But they have the most amazing gag reflex. They will gag. But it, they very rarely, unless you're doing something cheap, stupid, like giving them a grape or a hot dog, right? Something that is clearly a choking hazard. Their bodies are really good at keeping them safe. The book Baby Led Weaning that's on Amazon is great for, like, making you feel secure about doing this. I don't really follow their guidelines when it comes to nutrition, but, you know, that's me. <laughs> How old are you, Natasha? So Natasha is my alter ego, and she's 27. <laughs> but Nisha is 38. Uh, L, are you still doing cold plunges? Not during the winter. I get enough cold therapy just by being outside doing my chores, but I probably will fill it back up in the next few months and do that again randomly. <clears throat> Natasha, <laughs> Natasha is 27 and she likes long walks on the beach and eating carbohydrates, but that's my alter ego. That's Natasha. <laughs> uh, I never know how to pronounce this, but I'm just going to go Urs. Do you ever read true stories? Yes. Um, so I've read several memoirs. I've read books based on true stories. I've read autobiographies. I've read biographies. Um, I read uh, business books a lot. I'm actually reading one right now. Um, I read the Bible. Let me see what's on my bookshelf back here. Um, uh, and then also health books, obviously, I guess. <laughs> I rescue pets. <gasps> oh, oh, yeah, it makes sense now. <laughs> I rescue pets. I don't feel like an idiot. <laughs> no fig deal. I don't have any health issues. Can I still do carnivore? I just want to lose weight. I'm 130 pounds. You can still do carnivore. Uh, but also, you could do low-carb keto or meat-based and still lose weight. 130 pounds is not that heavy. Also, how tall are you? Like, unless you're... 
four foot 11, 130 pounds. There's a hundred people in this comment section that would be like, I wish I was 130 pounds. But also carnivore can help with all kinds of things that, you know, energy, um, Sorry, the sheep are really distracting me in the yard. Yeah, carnivore's great if you want to do that. And it doesn't feel like hard to you. If you just want to be carnivore, go for it. Um, yeah. Hi. Yeah, Shelly says, I want to be 130 pounds. Um, Melissa, what are y'all having for Easter dinner? I honestly haven't thought about that at all. I don't know. Probably I might do a roasted chicken in my Dutch oven. Yeah, probably roasted chicken and Ken always wants ribs for any <laughs> special occasion. So I'll probably do um, braised ribs, uh, short ribs, braised short ribs. And then broccoli salad, deviled eggs, of course. You have to have deviled eggs on Easter. I mean, around here you do anyways. I don't know about your house, but <laughs> deviled eggs. Um, I might make a dessert. I don't know. These sheep, they're just so cute. It's so fun to look out my window and see little tiny babies out there. What a life, right? Hashtag blessed. Who saw the picture of the baby on my Instagram? By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you can go do that. After this is over, uh, it is at Nisha underscore Salisbury. And you can go hang out with me over there. I'm going to try to be more active on Instagram. Like in the stories. I just, I don't know. I get caught up doing everything else and I'm just I don't know I don't know why I have a hard time posting on Instagram now several of you saw it all right this is a good question Patricia says what are your kids favorite snacks so Bonnie loves pork rinds loves pork rinds her favorite are the 4505 tahine she likes the regular plain ones too, but we had some tahine flavored ones and she just went to town. She would climb her little ta toddler tower, climb and open the cabinets and scream at me till I got them down for her. They like cashews. They like um, Peterson Far Peterson's Farms has pickled sausage link things that come in individual packets. They're like healthy Slim Jims. But they're pickled. So they got vinegar in them. She, lo she loves those. Uh, Beckett really likes Catalina Crunch. Their cinnamon cereal, which is not perfect, but it's really good when we're on road trips or um, church, like taking snacks to church. This burns. <laughs> this is, okay. So this is, if you didn't know what this is called, this is called Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme. I thought this was just lip gloss, but it's the tingly kind. So if my lips get to looking really funny, you'll know why. Ow, that kind of hurts. <laughs> I have a cut on my lip. Um, yeah. Sunny, stupid question. I love your mic. Why do you use it sometimes and sometimes you don't? I always use it during my live streams. Always. During my vlogs. This is hooked up to my computer. Like right now, I'm on my laptop on my webcam. Uh, and this does well. You know, it'd be a bit hard to mount it on my camera, which is <laughs> tiny. Right, so this is my vlogging camera. This is what I film all of my YouTube videos on. So I always use this when I'm doing live streams. This is a Rode mic. It's called a Pod Mic USB for those of you interested <laughs> yeah Bonnie's my girl yeah it's got plumper in it so if you want to plump your lips up but you don't want lip injections you can put this cayenne pepper lip gloss on your lips and I mean it works for a time 
Patricia. Oh, I would show you the sheep, but the glare, like you couldn't see out the window, so I'm going to be a bit pointless. I'll try to vlog the sheep this week since they're going to be in the pasture where I can actually see them. Dreamweaver, wouldn't it be easier to film videos with an iPhone? So my entire channel was built on iPhone videos. Up until I hit, I don't know, 150. No, I don't even know. It was like a month or two ago, not that long. Uh, why did I stop using my camera on my phone? Well, multiple reasons. The battery would die very quickly because if you're filming as much as I film, that uses a lot of battery. It also fills up my iCloud storage with videos of food, which is not really what I want on my iCloud storage, right? I don't really care about looking back in time and seeing the burger that I ate in October of 2022, you know? I don't care about that. It's taking up all of my iCloud storage. And when I travel, I want to play on my phone, do things on my phone, check my email, sometimes while I am filming a video. So that's why I use a handheld. This is the Sony ZV-1M2 and it has the pop-out screen so you can see yourself and make sure that it's in focus and all that stuff. It's actually a really good camera if you're interested in YouTubing and you're ready to move away from your phone. This is a good place to start uh, but your iPhone is perfectly fine. Like I said I got I hit 100k on my channel using my iPhone. Can you hear the sheep in the background? They're going, Meh. yeah, I can't believe the vegans haven't commented on uh, the sheep photo last year. They really went crazy, but I posted it on Twitter like an idiot and they came for me because I said lambing season, which is if you have ever lived on a farm or anywhere where there are sheep, you know, lambing season means the babies are born. Babies are being born. It's the season of the babies. <laughs> and they thought it meant that we were killing the babies. Obviously not. That would be weird for multiple reasons. Anyway, they went to town on that, and that was really interesting. I think it got like, I don't know, 100,000 impressions or something. I was like, geez, this is why I'm not on Twitter. Sharon, good question. Do you raise animals for food? The picture of you and the baby sheep is precious. Now I would think it would be hard to hold them, love them, name them when they are food sources. Well, for some people it would be hard, but I've been raised on a farm since, well, I was born. We've always had animals. My grandpa had animals. My mom and dad had animals. We've just always raised um, farm animals. And also I've been hunting since I went with my dad and his friends hunting since I could walk essentially and you know I killed my first deer when I was eight and helped field dress it and then I took it to the place to get it processed and you know then I ate it I just never had that I was really I was raised understanding what like, you can love animals and appreciate where they fall on the you know hierarchy of food like we are deer and sheep they're prey we're predators and that's what I believe, and there are people who disagree with me, but I don't really give a crap. <laughs> I hunt, and I eat, and, like, they're adorable, and they're cute, but then when they grow up, they're just not that cute anymore, and they're mostly, you know, that's what we love them for, to be food. I'm able to, you know, understand that. And I think more people need to understand that just because you, you get your meat from the grocery store doesn't mean that a, an animal, you know, didn't sacrifice its life for you to be able to have that sustenance and appreciating that and giving respect to the animal. I think they deserve our respect. We raise them really well. We treat them good. They have the best life and they have one bad day, right? More people need to learn to stop separating themselves from that part of this diet, you know, being human, essentially. When we hunt, we give, we say a prayer over the animal, and we say thank you for its sacrifice, and we give it respect, and yeah. 
Good question. Thank you for that. I do rescue. That's right. I do rescue animals. Like cats. But the sheep are here for a purpose. I'm here for a purpose. There's purpose for every living animal and every human being on this planet. We all have our purpose. My cat's purpose is to hunt the mice and keep them out of my house. <laughs> and also, you know, Bonnie loves the cats. My dog's purpose, Will Toto, bless him. You know, he don't have a whole lot of work that he does, but he is loud. He will alert me if somebody's in the driveway. And Lily will tear into somebody. She also has a job. Doggo, our Great Pyrenees, his job is to keep the coyotes away. Keep them from coming and eating the sheep. He protects the sheep. And the sheep's job is to provide sustenance, should we need it, that is regeneratively farmed, and provides a good set of nutrient-dense protein. And the chickens' jobs are to eat the bugs, kill snakes when they can, poop everywhere, spread seeds, and give me fresh eggs that are pastured and delicious. And they're also cute. And that's how a farm works. Yeah, Allison, totally. So compartmentalization some people don't have that uh, if you're not good at that you can't be a nurse you can't be a doctor if you took every single thing that happened in the world and you dive down into it emotionally you couldn't get out of it right as a nurse I saw a lot of bad stuff I had to keep going I had to do my job if I broke down which I'm not saying that never happened every now and then something broke me but 99% of the time I was able to get back up on my feet and go take care of the next person because they were depending on me. So I'm just that type of person. Some people can't do that. But I think it's a skill that maybe we should be working on. <laughs> Bonnie has grown so quick. She is a doll baby, but yet yeah, a little tomboy trying to stay up with Beckett. Yes, she loves her dresses and she'll come out and show us her dress and like I'll say do you feel pretty and she'll be like yes and then she'll you know go play in the dirt and the creek and throw rocks and all kinds of stuff she's well rounded you know she's backwoods bougie just like her mama <laughs> uh three doodles says who takes care of the animals when you go out of time so we have people that help us that uh work on the farm when we are out of town that come and make sure everything's running smoothly and they do a really good job and we appreciate them a lot. Yeah, the lip gloss is working, right? It works and it also makes your lips pink and I don't know, it is a little painful at first, so I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, thanks Amanda. We got 500 people watching. If you haven't said hi in the comments and told me where you're watching from, say hi. I love to see your comments. And if you're watching the replay, also say hey. Just say hey, hey. Hey, girl, hey. Are you going to do some more backwoods? What do you mean? <laughs> backwoods bougie? Is that what I mean? Like videos? Is that what you mean? I don't know what you mean. I do backwoods every day. That's where I live. <laughs> Uh, can you recommend someone in Nashville for getting Botox? So, Zane. You know Zane? Cute Zane. Kicking ass over 50 Zane. His wife does Botox in Nashville. Her name, is, her name is Danielle. So, you could probably find him on Instagram and find her. And her office is listed on her Instagram. And uh, I think she probably does an amazing job. And she's gorgeous and she's sweet and I love her. So, Danielle. Uh, Griggs. South Carolina. Hey, Germany. What's up? Arkansas. California. Nottingham. I've been to Nottingham. I might go again. We're going to London in a few months. So excited. This will be our third trip to London. It's a, it's definitely our third, but maybe our fourth. Honestly, I, can't, I don't know. It was. It's been a long time. It was before we had kids. We went a lot. We love London. 
I would love to go to Ireland and Scotland. So my grandma's side of the family are Irish, Doherty, oh, oh, oh Doherty. But then when they came here, it got changed to Doherty. And then Ken's side of the family, um, Scottish. And then also Puerto Rican. So not Ken. Man, he's not Puerto Rican. <laughs> Washington. Does Ken have an alter ego? Oh gosh, he's got about eighty-five different personalities. It changed. If you watch Monday Night Live, you can see him. You can do all his personalities. Texas, Lantana, Texas, Lantana. I feel like I knew a girl named Lantana one time. <laughs> hey, Dara. Oh, Hong Kong. Hey, Gracie. Hey, what time is it in Hong Kong? It's gotta be like definitely different. I don't. I have so bad at time zones. Like I got no clue. I got no clue. <laughs> Amish country. I bet you have access to some amazing butter. We have Mennonites and Amish in this area, and they have a little store. And we need, I should take you guys. Y'all want to go shopping at at the store at the Amish store? I think that would be fun. Maybe. Tell me. Would you like to go with me? In a vid? In a vlog? Where have you always wanted to visit? Um, I love Rome. We did get to go to Rome, but we were only there for 24 hours. I would love to spend a week in Rome. Um, so I'd like to go back there. I don't feel like I got a real... I mean, I got an amazing experience. I don't even know how we did all the things that we did in 24 hours, but we did it. But I would like to go and really dive in and explore. We've been to Venice. We've been to Montenegro. I'd like to go back to Montenegro and spend more than a day there. We were on like a tour, right? We're somewhere I haven't been at all that I would like to go back to. Or I would like to go to. Hmm. Paris. Duh. I haven't been to Paris. France. <laughs> There's a lot of Parises. There's a Paris, Tennessee. Did you know that? Yeah, Paris, France. Never been. Would love to go. Emily in Paris. Natasha in Paris. <laughs> That's going to be a new joke. So you're in on it if you're here and you got you got to experience Natasha. Now you know. We have an inside joke together, you and I. Germany is beautiful. I would like to go to Germany for sure. Australia. I just don't know. That's a long way away. And y'all got some weird critters down there, too. I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a Paris, Texas. I think there's a Paris in every state, honestly. But that's funny, isn't it? Oh, no, I don't have a hairband. I really want to pull my hair in a ponytail. Oh, well. Natasha in Paris sounds like a good book, doesn't it? <laughs> Natasha in Paris. I could really up my country accent. Hi, my name's Natasha, and today we're going to Paris. Paris, Texas. You know those people who, never mind, I'm not going to get into that today. But you know, I could really, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to be nice. Oh, no. What? Angela says, my daughter went to Australia and slept in the outback. I would be terrified. The woods here, they don't scare me. There's snakes, there's rattlesnakes, there's copperheads, there's cottonmouths. Like, we got snakes. We got coyotes. We got mountain lions sometimes. You know, we got bobcats. There's some predators here. But we don't have nothing like Australia's got. And I just don't, I just don't think I could. Mm -mm. Jill, Jillia, is it true that people in your state eat squirrels? Yes, it is. You know, what else is true? I eat squirrels, and I actually really love and enjoy eating squirrels. <laughs> and when I was 13, for my birthday dinner, I asked for fried squirrel for my birthday dinner with cream potatoes. And that is a true story. They're delicious. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. What does squirrel taste like? Um, chicken. <laughs> I mean, it really does. It kind of, it, it tastes very similar to chicken. It kind of tastes like rabbit. You know, rabbit and squirrel and chicken, they kind of all taste similar. Same 
profile. Right. They do taste like chicken. I don't know what to tell you. It's the best thing to compare it to. I don't think it's a Tennessee thing. I think many people eat squirrel. Cream potatoes, mashed potatoes. That's what we call them, cream potatoes, mashed potatoes. Is it the same? I don't know. Anyways, I don't eat that anymore, obviously, but... Squirrel stew. Yep. <laughs> no, I did not get mad squirrel disease. It was, it's amazing. If we have things going around here. <laughs> what is that noise? We have stuff, uh, we have things. Okay, I don't know how I say this. Lots of times, different groups of people, sometimes churches, sometimes hunting groups, will put on these things called wild game suppers. What is that noise? <laughs> uh, you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody been to a wild game supper? If you have, put it in the comments. Let me see you. I want to know where my backwoods bougie people are. I don't know what that noise is. I'm very sorry for that. So a wild game supper essentially is what it sounds like. People bring dishes that include wild game. So that can be anything from venison, turkey, squirrel, possum, snake, frog legs. What else have I eaten at a wild game supper? Possum. I said possum. Also, we say possum, not opossum, but I think some people actually say the O, don't they? No. Skunk. I've never eaten skunk, but I guess that's probably something. Have you eaten skunk? No. Oh, fish, you know, fresh caught fish, um, quail. Yeah. And anyways, they're amazing. We should host a wild game supper at the next PhD conference. That would be fun. What? I keep, oh, I know it's Bonnie's microphone. I bet. But I don't know why that would be making that noise. Was that what it was? Yes, sir. <laughs> it wasn't the smoke detector. I don't know what it was. Here's the man. Here's that flirt. You're a flirt, Kenberry. Flirty flirt. Flirty, flirty, flirty. Yeah, I've eaten steak. A steak. Duh, I've eaten steak. Snake. I've eaten snake before. It was actually pretty good. Uh Oh, yeah. Um, alligator, gator, had that too. Anyways, that's the long and short of all the different things that I've eaten that may be weird to some people, but <clears throat> not really that weird around here. Did you say snake? I did say snake. Duck, yes. Shut up. All right, guys, it has been an hour. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit that on your way out. And the thumb, leave a comment, and I'll see you maybe next week. And if you're in the group, I'll see you, you know, in the group. Love you. Mean it.